good hello students welcome to lesson 13 unit 1 video as it relates to congruence as you can clearly see on the front screen so today we're going to go ahead and continue with congruence and just fine-tune the last couple things related to this concept in the last few lessons we have been studying congruence pretty heavily we introduced the target of hey we can look at shapes visually and know if they are the same you did all very well with that and then we fine-tuned it even more by looking at area perimeter and even yesterday we used rigid transformations like rotations reflections and translations to prove that two shapes are congruent and don't forget about those corresponding parts where we discussed corresponding sides have to have the same length and corresponding angles have to have the same length well today we're going to continue with congruence but just add a couple more elements all this is is additional reasoning it's to help you explain congruence it is very easy to just look at two shapes often it's easy let's say and just say oh they are the same but we have to look at different things and reason it out so it's more specific so instead of just skimming the surface of congruency of what looks the same we're explaining why they look the same so today's target I can use distances between two points to decide if two figures are congruent so we're gonna look at distances between two points and this probably gives you a little hint we're gonna continue to look at lengths but it might not necessarily just be lengths on the outside corresponding sides there could be other corresponding parts so to start us off, okay, let's start off with the notice and wondering. On page 103, you'll notice, okay, there are a bunch of uh, shapes, okay? Take a moment to figure out, okay, or write down what you notice and what you wonder. Let's say about two minutes or so, okay? Please go ahead and pause the lesson video at this point and resume it once it seems like the class has completed this first part of the warm-up. All right, students, you should see on the screen a little bit of my noticing wonderings. Obviously, this is a lesson video, so we're not going to be able to sh completely share out as a group. But when I'm looking at something like this, some of the noticings I see is, okay, seems like there's some ovals. Maybe that confirms something that you may have noticed. Uh, some are oriented up and some sideways um, I'm looking at. And it does look like to me, I noticed that they have different diameters but kind of like two sets seem to be the same. Like there's two different sets. They're just oriented differently. A uh, couple wonderings that I have that may be similar to what you may have. Uh, why are we studying ovals? We've been studying a lot of polygons lately, like rectangles and triangles, things with very set sides, not curved sides. And why are they oriented differently, even though they may possibly be the same shape? So. These notice and wonders are mine, but the hope is you're activating your brain uh, math-wise and looking at, hey, this could be a preview of what we're going to study here in a little bit. So let's dive right into it. And we're going to move to activity one, and it's going to be more of a TPS, okay? think, pair, share. Okay? I want you to take a moment and discuss with your group. Okay? If my computer stops glitching, are any of the ovals congruent to one another? Explain how you know. So, ah, there it is. We are definitely looking at this similar diagram from what we did in the warm-up. So right now, I want you to work with your group okay, and discuss, are any of the ovals congruent to one another? But the key thing always is explain how you know. Take about, let's say, five minutes on this, okay? Please go ahead and pause the video at this point and then resume when it seems the majority or all of the class have completed this first task. Thank you. All right, students. So you had some time to work with your group and discuss. And typically here we would go to a share out, but being that this is a non-interactive video, let's look at what your conclusions could be similar to what I have up here. So the key thing is, is not just matching them, but explaining how you know. So I circled the two yellow ones and the two green ones. And uh, similar to some of my noticings, I mentioned that the two circled are the same. I know this by noticing the interior diameters are the same. So let me zoom in on this. I'm looking at the yellow ones. I noticed that, okay, interesting enough, the segment from here to here across is the same as the segment from here to here that you can see me sketching. So with that, if they are three units, and it looks like they're three, and the interior three, 
that's one measurement. I couldn't really use the outside because it's curved to get an indicator if they're congruent. I also confirmed that, well, it kind of looks like the dimensions right here, that they're like two across, almost two, they're not perfectly on the grid, are also the same. So I looked at the inside dimension and that's something we have not had to do in any of the shapes we've studied so far it's always typically been the angles or the exterior. With that circular shape we're dealing with, there's not really uh, angles that we can study heavily. And on the other shape, it's not, it, it's not as exact with the three across. It, this green that I'm shading right now matches up or corresponds to this green. They look to be the same length. I just don't know what they are. If I had to get, guess, it would be about just a little over two. And similarly, I looked at those other lines. So congruency comes from not only the shape, okay, but different things inside possibly for a size. Even though we keep saying same shape, same size, the size part can be dimensions that aren't necessarily just on the outside. So with that being said, at this point, go ahead and change, annotate, add to anything that you have. You, hopefully you are reasoning out something similar, but if you haven't, go ahead and annotate and add to yours. Okay? So we've been going at this for a little while. Let's go ahead and pause this video right now, take a stretch break one minute, and resume the video as soon as everyone's back in their seats. Okay? Please realize this is a mental math break. There shouldn't be multiple students out of the classroom for random excuses. Thank you. We will resume in just a moment. Please go ahead and pause this video. All right, students, we should be back in our seats, ready to rock. So we're going to go ahead and jump to activity two, and it's titled Corresponding Points of Congruent Figure. So this one I'm going to go ahead and direct and drive the lesson. So uh, it, from your perspective, please listen carefully, follow along, and if you have any questions, okay, save them for when we return. On Monday. So here we go. It says here, uh, here are two congruent shapes with some corresponding points labeled. So I, I'm observing that we got a lot of we got a lot of different curvatures and we also have straight line sides. So this is kind of a combination of some of the ovals and the polygons we dealt with yesterday. So going kind of piece by piece with this uh, chronologically here, one says on the bottom figure, draw the points B, D, and E and label them B prime, D prime, E prime. So I'm looking at these shapes and thinking, okay, I gotta label them in the corresponding parts. This does look like a reflection over this type of line, but it's the also kind of seems to be trend translated a little up and to the left. So I just gotta be careful where they go. Because it's reflected, I know B prime is more than likely there. Okay, and then looking around, D, I gotta look at some features. D prime is where the curvature and the segment seems to meet, and that would make E prime on this elbow section here where it seems to turn an obtuse looking angle. So I'm gonna double check my work. I feel I got everything correct. And yep, I'm gonna go ahead and conclude that I did number one. For number two, it says draw line segments AD and A prime, D prime, and measure them. So AD, A, prime D prime. So let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and connect A D and it looks like it's this. Okay, let's draw a line there and A D prime. So at this stage, okay, I'm not going to necessarily measure them right now, okay, though I do have a handy dandy ruler. Actually, you know what? Why not? Let's go ahead and kind of generally see what it would look like. If I'm looking at my ruler, I can see it doesn't have specific measures here, but I can look at the tick marks and see it goes from one, okay, one long one all the way to just past the short one here. And I'm just eyeballing it. If you have a ruler, you'd probably be a little more accurate. And looking over here, excuse that bell, you can see that it is pretty much the same distance, which probably confirms something we already would know. Do the same for segments BC, B prime, C prime, and all that. What do you notice? Well, I'm noticing right now that more than likely these measurements are going to be the same. So let's do that. I'm going to do B prime, C prime, and BC. We're starting to use segments on the inside. 
So I'm going to connect the last set, AE and A prime, E prime. So what I notice is that all the segments that correspond, okay, using that term correspond, that means they match up on the other side, that correspond are the same length. So we're looking at lengths not just on the outside. We're looking at three interior measures and they do look the same. My orange, my blue, and my green, they all look the same. If I measure them on paper, I will confirm that. And so for question number three, let's see, and it's asking us to just extrapolate on this. Do you think there could be a pair of corresponding segments with different lengths? Well, it's driving the point home that no, okay? If the shapes are congruent, if the shapes are congruent, all set corresponding segments are the same. All corresponding, let me scroll that up so you can read it properly. All corresponding segments are the same. We can even use the word congruent. All corresponding segments are congruent. That means no matter what distance, whether it be on the outside, inside, interior, it will be the same, even if we add up distances. So I'm going to go and extend and connect a couple dimensions here. I'm going to connect B prime, D prime. Okay? And you can see that even if I go from C to B to D and add those measurements together, they're going to be exactly the same as their corresponding parts on the other shape. So the once again, the takeaway from here is that we are looking at all dimensions. It's not necessarily just exterior dimensions or interior angles. Any segment within two corresponding, I mean two congruent shapes and our corresponding will be congruent. So at this point, please pause the video if needed, okay? And we will move forward with the next activity. All right, as we move forward into the next activity, I wanna just kinda of synthesize the last couple pieces visually up here. Just make sure, okay, you don't have to write this down, but it's, it, it's basically uh, visualizing what I just talked about and just recap it. Two shapes are congruent when there's a sequence of translation, reflection, rotations that match up one shape exactly with the other. I talked in the beginning about it possibly being a reflection and translation. We're gonna continue that fact from yesterday. And if they are congruent, okay, we can use this intuition to find the right motions of the plane to demonstrate they're congruent. We can use the rigid transformations, okay? We can also know that they are congruent by any of the interior measures, okay? So rigid transformations were yesterday. We're continuing in today, and we're also adding the element of everything on the inside is going to be correspond, if they're corresponding, are going to be congruent. All right, the last activity, okay, is, yeah, I, I like this one. It's a fun one, okay? I want you to carefully, okay, start yourself, okay, with quiet work done, just kind of a couple minutes, uh, not five minutes. I, I would say probably about two minutes, okay? I want you to look at these and think, are they congruent? Are they congruent? And what you want to do is, after you've gotten a minute to think about it, share out with your group, all right? Turn and talk with your group mates and think and explain what you saw. Why do you think they're current? Use as precise uh, of language as you possibly can based on what we have discussed, okay? So take a moment to go ahead and work on this activity. Go ahead and annotate in your book as needed. Pause this video at this point, please. All right, you should have had time to discuss this. Well, let's see how okay, observant you are. So without much further ado, here's the reveal. Even though individual parts of the faces are congruent, the faces are not actually congruent because we need to look at everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and annotate a little. The distance between the eyes on the right and left side are different. Even though the eyes are the same, the distance between them are the same. And when I traced it right there and on the grid, you can see the difference. Additionally, if you are very observant, and this one was a little harder to see, if you notice the mouth on the right was slightly lower than the mouth on the left. So if I draw a distance from the top of the head to the mouth, 
and I'm going to do it over on the other side. You can see that the one on the right is just slightly longer, and that is going to prove that they are not congruent. So this was a quick exercise in observing everything. You look at everything. Even though the faces look very similar, it's the same mouth shape, same eye shape, and same head shape, it's what's inside is not congruent. Every corresponding part must be exactly the same, and that is the point. So with that being said, I want you to go ahead and move to note mode. Okay, so for the next couple slides, basically we're summarizing everything from this past like three, four uh, lessons. We did a lot of explanations of congruence. So let's see if we can lock it up. My recommendation is to do it in the workbook notes section or do it in your own notebook if you have one. And pause the video for each slide. I'll briefly explain it, but then you're to continue to the next slide and unpause it. So go ahead and get this first idea down. Two figures are congruent when there's a sequence of translation, rotation, reflection, matching up one figure with the other. It's the rigid transformations. Get this down, pause this video, resume when the class is ready. Big idea number two. To show that two figures are not congruent, it is enough to find corresponding points in the figures which are not the same distance apart or corresponding angles that have different measures. Basically, it's saying as long as you can find one set of corresponding parts that are not congruent, it is enough information. Only one thing can be wrong or not match for them not to be congruent. Please go ahead and pause this video until everyone's finished and then resume. All right, big idea number three. The distance between pairs of corresponding points and congruent figures is the same. All distances between pairs of corresponding points and congruent figures are the same. It doesn't matter what distance it is, as long as they correspond, they will be the same. Please pause this video and resume once finished. All right, and the last one, this is like special cases. Some figures are made up of several parts, but Okay, the, everything has to be the same. Like for example, all six of the circles are congruent, but in the left design, each circle touches both the other two. The distance between any cir circle centers in one design will be different than the distance between any two circle centers in the other. So for example, if I go ahead and put the centers in, you can see it creates a triangle on the left design, but it creates a right, not a right, a straight line in the right design everything has to be the same even though individual parts may not please pause this video until everyone's finished all right students at this point you should be able to go ahead and move into practice mode so uh, homework number 12 is going to be page 108 to 110 questions 1 through 4 if there is time left in this class at this point you are to work on it diligently please do not move around sit in your seats you can get slight help from people around you at your table but the room is not going to be relaxed i would like you to sit at your stations work through this get help from your classmates and you should be good to go if you use the time wisely you may not have homework over the weekend with that being said that concludes the video thank you for watching